The child who witnessed the murder of his father and the other Taino leaders in Sharawa was taken away from the killing field by a Spanish priest. He was placed in the care of missionaries and baptized Enrique. Although raised by Spaniards, he never forgot his own identity, heir to the chiefdom of the Bajoruco region of the island. Enrique was a tall and graceful man with a well-proportioned body. His face was neither handsome nor ugly, but that of a serious and stern man. He married a native, a woman of excellent and noble lineage named Doña Lucia, Bartolomé de las Casas. The Spanish government created a labor grant system under which individual Spanish landholders were given village populations to use as forced labor. Enrique, his wife, and his people were turned over to a debauched young Spaniard named Valenzuela. They were at his mercy. The priest, Las Casas, protested. In a more just world, Enrique would have been the master. Valenzuela viewed Enriquillo as a slave and valued him less than manure in the street. Enrique complied with Valenzuela's tyrannical demands, for which he was rewarded with regular beatings and robbed of his last remaining possessions. His many appeals to Spanish authorities fell on deaf ears. When Valenzuela raped his wife, Enrique reached his breaking point. He and his followers escaped to their homelands in the lofty Bajoruco Mountains. The Spanish came to call him the rebel Enrique, and those who followed him were termed rebels and insurgents. Although in truth they were not rebelling, but only fleeing from their cruel enemies who were misusing and destroying them just as a cow or an ox tries to escape from the slaughterhouse. Bartolomé de las Casas. Enrique organized his people. Women, children, and elderly were sent into caves high in the mountains, where they raised chickens and cultivated gardens to feed the resistance army. Scouts were posted on every crag and pass. Heavy boulders rolled into place above the footpaths. Enrique instructed his men to fight only in self-defense, to kill Spaniards only in the course of battle, and otherwise to simply deprive them of their arms. At first, the Spanish army was confident they would quickly crush the Taino resistance. But Enrique's people, armed only with spears, iron spikes, fish bones, and bows and arrows, fought with fierce determination against the Spanish and their sophisticated arms. Time after time, they forced the enemy to retreat. During one fierce battle, Valenzuela himself was captured. But even this mortal enemy's life would be spared. Enrique ordered him released. As word of Enrique's victories spread across the island, Many Taino fled to his refuge and joined the fight for freedom. His legend grew. It was said that Enrique never slept at night, that he himself patrolled the village until dawn. For over a decade, he fought Spain to a standstill. Finally, unable to defeat the guerrillas on their own territory, an exhausted and humiliated Spanish government made overtures of peace. I know the Spanish very well, because they killed my father and grandfather and all the people of the kingdom of Sharawa and reduced the population of the entire island of Española. I have fled to my own land where neither I nor any of my followers are harming anyone, but are simply defending ourselves against those who came to capture and kill us. I need not talk to another Spaniard. 
Enrique, Taino. But there was one Spaniard to whom Enrique would still talk, the priest, Las Casas. After many years spent demanding the king act to stop Spanish atrocities in the New World, Las Casas had been officially designated protector of the Indians. He now sought out Enrique in his mountain stronghold. Two months later, Las Casas and Enrique appeared before Spanish authorities and negotiated a truce. Fourteen years after it began, the rebellion came to an end, but only after the Spanish agreed to guarantee freedom for Enrique's people. At the base of the Cibao Mountains, Enrique settled with his 4,000 followers, the last members of a culture that had flourished for millennia. Ser de aquí. 